Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our third presentation of uh, the morning is actually by six. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So you have probably already seen many smart contract hacks and uh, it's kind of simple uh, solidity-based vulnerabilities on the blockchain space. And I thought uh, it's a good idea to bring a little bit more complex things uh, to this conference and the hype, because what is the hype now in hacking? It's in, in Web3 or blockchain term, whichever buzzword you like to use. Um, it is the bridge hacking. So I uh, have four parts in this presentation. I will start with an introduction of what a bridge is. I will explain you what are coins, tokens, wrap tokens, how blockchains are connected through centralized bridges. And I will show you an example uh, how a fun, a really interesting uh, project was hacked and how some funds were recovered. I'll show you also the exploit and the tools you can use to do bridge hacking and solidity based and kind of depth hacking. So um, let's move on. Uh, why would you do this anyways? What's Web3, what is this thing anyways? Uh, the good thing in uh, hacking cryptocurrencies in this Web3 area is that you can hack money directly. And this was not available before in the Web2 area, which is kind of, uh, yeah, it's different in a way from Web1 that it is interactive, but it is commercialized, it is centralized, it is not really private, and so on. Um, at, at this uh, space, we were not able to um, hack money in such a direct way because, for example, if there was a bank hack, you had to transfer the balances and you had to uh, fight with the uh, risk management team. In Web3, if you uh, take the coins or tokens, then it's gone and uh, you already have it in your wallet. There are right now not many systems that can actually stop you or uh, stop you from taking the balances when your exploit is successful. And also, um, also you can, uh, you can uh, directly access the, this native uh, system uh, on the blockchain because that's inbuilt. So all this kind of buzzwords. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with, uh, with these uh, things which are written here. So a uh, really short introduction to, um, to what a bridge is and how it works and what we mean actually when we say blockchain. It is really overused word. Actually in the Bitcoin white paper, um, there was no blockchain word used. So Bitcoin is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network uh, uh, a money system. But the term was coined, <laughs> coined. I mean, uh, someone figured this, uh, out this term a couple of years late, later, maybe around 2012, 2011 or something. So when we say blockchain, most of the people mean that that's a data which is hashed and then the next block is also data with the hash and also with the previous hash and this chain continues. Plus the consensus algorithm which uh, makes sure that the nodes that are participating in the system are connecting uh, together and have the consensus and they agree that X uh, account has uh, Y balance and so on. And uh, plus we also have the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, library inbuilt. So that's the blockchain package. Uh, and in this presentation, when I speak about a blockchain, that's what it means. So the bridge is, um, in, in this case, and in most cases, what we see as bridges, these are Web2-like centralized front-end, back-end servers that are communicating with APIs uh, through to providers who are sending uh, data to, to blockchain and, uh, and make transactions happen. This exists so you can uh, bridge coins from one blockchain uh, to another one. And the coin uh, most often means that this is 
the, the lowest layer of uh, payment system on the blockchain. And when Ethereum came out with something new, which is the EVM, which is basically the possibility that you can run code on top of uh, a blockchain on this, um, this uh, decentralized consensus-like system. They put this EVM layer where you can code in uh, either Solidity or Viper. Solidity is the more common one. And create your own tokens. So what actually is a token? Uh, if you look at ERC20 standard, you will see the details of how this specific token looks like. Um, but this is nothing else than you specifying a variable and the max supply and, and uh, adding some logic to your tokens and sending uh, the balances from account A to B. And of course, as we uh, went through time, uh, it became more and more complex and more logic was added, but the core is the solidity at the token. So what is a wrapped token? A wrapped token, and we can go to the next slide, because I said we will see a fun example how a uh, blockchain banana bridge can be hacked. Um, this this uh, will show you how um, the system works uh, in detail. So what was happening in, in this part, in this uh, hack, that there is banana blockchain. It's a meme coin, it's like Dogecoin, but with bananas. It's, uh, I thought it's a very simple exploit. It's fun to explain. Uh, there will be some other cases at the end of this talk, but, um, but th this will be uh, surely something that can get everyone started. So what, uh, what was happening there? So there is the blockchain itself with the coins. They implemented a bridge where you could send your funds to. So let's say you have some uh, banana coins in the system, you send it to the bridge, and in exchange, the bridge gives you a receipt. And the receipt is generated from this, this web to like uh, server, uh, from the backend, mm, as I remember, Node.js uh, is running there. So you can scream, oh my god, JavaScript. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, most of the things uh, are actually uh, written in that. And so it gives you a receipt, and then you can use this receipt to mint wrapped tokens on other uh, Solidity-enabled systems where the Banano smart contract is, um, is running. And in this uh, case, and in the demo which I prepared, I, I show you uh, the two chains. Now we will be uh, on Polygon, and we will be also uh, on, uh, on Binance Smart Chain, which are, um, which are uh, EVM-enabled uh, systems. They basically forked Ethereum, and then, uh, then this project started to use it. Um, so yeah, that is the basic infrastructure of this uh, example. And you can already start thinking about the issues. You have one blockchain, you have a centralized uh, point, a single point of failure, and you have two uh, smart contracts which accept receipts. So if you have done some web pen testing, maybe you already have some ideas of what could go wrong. Uh, anyone with ideas? If you have a receipt and you have two systems, you can use the same receipt. Hmm, yes, yeah, someone? Exactly, yes. Nice. So, uh, replay attack. So that was uh, what happened, and someone, uh, funny, well, <laughs> the story was really funny because and the Banano uh, chat, uh, some guys started to ask, oh, how does this bridge work and how the receipts are working? And they uh, started to uh, ask the developers about that because they didn't have enough skills to figure out themselves. And it turns out they were trying to hack the bridge, which they succeeded. So in the end, we found this uh, two guys uh, in the chat log, Squidrod and Alibaba, <laughs> who were asking, uh, what was going on and uh, their account was connected um, to the hack. It took uh, some time until the uh, guys figured out what was going on because, 
Yeah, you send one banana to the uh, bridge, and then you use the receipt uh, on uh, both smart contracts, and you had two wrapped bananas from the smart contract, but it works uh, the way around, so when you have the wrapped bananas, you can exchange them back to the, the blockchain coins, the main bananas. So that's uh, pretty straightforward what was happening, but we still haven't looked into the uh, code and what actually was happening on a technical level. So first of all, um, I, I won't explain the front-end, back-end, and, uh, and this HTTP part level because we have seen this uh, a lot already, but uh, what is really important in this um, exploit, what these guys were doing, is the transaction itself and how it's built up and how you can put the receipt itself into um, the, the transaction. So um, what the attackers had to do is that they took an example of the transaction uh, that was provided by the bridge frontend and they only had to replace basically the uh, assigned um, data, the, the receipt in the transaction, and a little bit of tinkering so it works not just on, let's say, Polygon, but also on, uh, on, uh, on the other chain, the Binance chain. So uh, we can see how it works. First, uh, you, put, you build up the transaction, uh, I show you uh, Python script how you can do the ECDSA part for the uh, for the receipt, but uh, the transaction you can pre pretty much uh, put together with Web3.js library. You have it in Node.js. You also have it uh, Web3 in Python, so and also in Rust. So uh, whichever language you can uh, work with, uh, you can surely do it. So you prepare your transaction, and then you send your transaction uh, to either a provider, for example, if you have used MetaMask, it's one of the most common uh, wallet, then what MetaMask is doing in the background, it is using a provider that um, basically forwards your transaction to, to a, a node, uh, let's say Polygon node, and on the Polygon node, uh, it, is, it is checked, and if everything uh, is okay and worth broadcasting on the network, then it uh, is broadcasted to, to more nodes, and as time passes on and blocks are being mined, this uh, is propagating uh, everywhere on the blockchain, and if your transaction uh, was uh, correctly crafted, then uh, this won't revert, it will succeed and you will get a notification that your uh, transaction uh, is mined in a block and now it's finalized and you can start seeing the confirmations. So uh, let's start looking into uh, what was called in this exploit. Uh, basically, if you um, I do go through the uh, use of the bridge, of the banana bridge, which I will show you, and I really hope it will work for the first time. Uh, I, will, I will wrap some uh, bananas for you, and you will see this on the, on the blockchain, this exact uh, function call when you want to mint uh, with your receipt. So uh, the attackers, uh, what I explained so far, they had some ideas about that, but they were, let's say, not that bright to understand all the things. So all they did is that they were like screwing around, playing around, and they figured out if you find this and they copy this uh, to uh, a transaction on the other chain, then this um, function call with the same receipt data, uh, VRS, is uh, used, uh, so, so basically the VRS and, uh, and UID part is the most important for you, from uh, this uh, um, message, and uh, of course a recipient address, and uh, they, they just uh, copied it and put together the transaction. So what do we need for, uh, for hacking um, these systems if we want to be like a bit better than those guys or want to go a little deeper? Um, actually, not too much. 
uh, most of the cases when uh, we see exploits in uh, Ethereum based uh, systems and uh, front ends, you just need your Web2 hacking tools. Uh, you can use Firefox, Metamask. Uh, if you want to develop the exploit on your own machine, uh, you either use the Ethereum node, GET, or you use Ganache, which is a one-click blockchain. Uh, don't ask me why they call it Ganache and what it does with chocolate, I have no idea. Uh, also about Truffle, but with Ganache and Truffle you can run your own um, testing uh, system. Uh, on your on your laptop and it doesn't eat up all your processing power and all your memory So it's pretty convenient. You can test uh, your exploits on it and so on and um, you can also use Python um, because at, I would say uh, if you want to automatize some mm, Like more like generating the exploits Python can be kind of convenient So, uh, let's look into uh, the uh, bridge. So if you open polygon.banano.cc and connect your MetaMask to uh, this page, there is a big connect button if you open it. I already connected it and you can say I am new to this uh, Banano. Uh, then you can uh, send the address and then you can get uh, through this menu and in the end when you um, when you finish the process and connect it uh, to the bridge uh, then um, then you can get to this point where the transaction will be preferred from this uh, front end interface i actually haven't prepared uh, the the banano address to this so let's jump to the transaction um, so I can show you uh, how it works. Uh, whatever um, transaction uh, you want to have a look at, you can just go on the Explorer, in this case in Binance uh, chain, and you can see all the details. And, uh, and you can pretty much figure out uh, what, are, uh, what was sent uh, as long as you have on a smart contract level the, uh, the code. Because if you deploy a smart contract on a blockchain and you do not uh, ve verify, let's say, the contract, you do not upload it, all you see on the blockchain is the bytecode. So in this example, <coughs> uh, this is the wrapped banana uh, example. I think I just take it back. Uh, so, in this uh, example, we can see that the guys behind the project uh, basically verified the uh, Solidity code that they use for the smart contract that runs on Binance, and you can find uh, all, the, all the data here. And if we want to look at uh, the code and the more interesting part of the hack, uh, here is git. So basically a uh, little bit extension. So normally smart contracts uh, are immutable except if you use a proxy smart contract and you are able to replace the logic uh, of your smart contract but still keep the data. And in this case if you look at the uh, git commit you will see that they uh, also made an upgrade uh, to the smart contract. So not all smart contracts are actually immutable. If you see this uh, proxy setup, then you can, uh, you can see that, uh, that uh, you are not calling basically the smart contract in a direct way. It is proxied and, and uh, proxy admin can modify the address of, uh, of the contract that are, uh, uh, that are reliant to the uh, logic. So. <clears throat> but uh, how, how do we call it? So uh, one way to call a smart contract, and uh, for example, if you want to uh, do this mint with receipt uh, call, you can just connect your MetaMask to the Explorer and then uh, fill the fields and send a transaction. 
And the problem with this, uh, first of all, for example, in Binance uh, Scan, this is behind Cloudflare, which is pretty evil and um, not that nice. So you probably don't want to do this. And then it probably uh, connects to Infora and then uh, sends it uh, to the blockchain because you are using MetaMask. <clears throat> so if you don't want to use that, uh, but you want to call a smart contract, uh, I prepared a simple example. A question, do you see the code? Okay, I am actually trying to zoom it, but let's move it from here. No syntax highlight, but who is using syntax highlighting anyways? Uh, so, uh, contract one uh, will be calling contract two. That's the idea, so I quickly explain you what's happening there, and then we see, we try it in practice on the Remix ID. Remix ID is um, a JavaScript-based uh, IDE, which also implements EVM in your browser, so you have everything that you need for smart contract development. So let's say you have, for example, the received or whatever um, information, you already have uh, contract to <clears throat> deployed, like the Banano, Vrat Banano contract, and you want to call it from, uh, from your contract, which is the contract that you use for exploit. So uh, basically, you just um, uh, specify the, uh, the contract address, which you want to uh, call. Uh, that's the first thing uh, you do, and then if you specify it, you can uh, think about this like an interface, and then uh, in the second call, you can already call uh, the other contract, and this simple example works in most of the cases. Um, so it's pretty much that, and in this, uh, in this line, we change the other contract's uh, integer value to one. Let's see it in solidity. Um, Question, does it get recorded? Because then uh, everyone can uh, look at uh, this later, what happened. Because if I compile this um, smart contract, this uh, compiles into bytecode, which can be transacted to either on the blockchain or uh, you just use it in your JavaScript VM. And you can deploy it inside your browser. And then you are immediately able to uh, call it. So we have one deployed. We also deploy the second. We copy the smart contract address from the second to the first. You uh, set it. And then we check what is the uh, mind value, which is a zero. We set it to five just as a test. Uh, yes. And then now we can see it, that is five. I know you don't see it, but you can trust me. I'm an engineer. Uh, and now we call it from the first contract, and again, we uh, check it from the other one, and we see that it did change. So we could do the call from one contract to another. So you can take it, uh, this code as a skeleton of your exploit and uh, use it uh, in a way you like. So what else do we have here? Um, let me check my notes that I haven't forgot anything. Yeah, so uh, like one of the uh, key takeaways uh, from this is that we are at web uh, 2.5, definitely not web 3, where everything is decentralized and really uh, working quite well. We are right now patching uh, decentralized systems with centralized web 3 um, hacks, basically. And when this happens, then issues like this um, can appear. So uh, I also wanted to show, you will probably see it better, So, uh, to those who are familiar with Python, 
Mm, this might be more friendly for you. So uh, I was mentioning that you can uh, put together the ECDSA part, the VRS, which is uh, needed um, for the receipt. Most um, smart contract uh, logic is implementing the EC recover call in uh, Solidity, but how do you prepare something uh, for EC recover and make sure that whatever you uh, send or, or prepare, uh, here is an example of how you can use uh, EC recover in uh, Solidity in this last line. So this is the Solidity code example. And if you want to um, use uh, the, the correct way, then you either use my code or just search for it and you will find it uh, online. But I wanted to show you an example how you can provide the correct values. Uh, so basically, uh, we take the message, we take the private key <coughs> of the, so you need to generate uh, an Ethereum uh, private key. I just noted the public key near that if it's uh, needed. Um, then, uh, then we will encode this uh, message <coughs> so it can be used by V3, which is the Web3 um, Python module and it pretty much does most of the uh, work for you. And you can prepare the uh, signatures. Uh, you can also use this example in your backend if you want to build a bridge. Please don't do that. But you can pretty much uh, use a similar um, example. And if you want to uh, use uh, the same thing the way around, uh, not just to generate it, but recover, like the EC recover from Solidity, then uh, this, this is at the end, is the example on how you uh, do it in Python. You pretty much just pass the hash and the VRS um, uh, to, to the uh, call. So that's how it looks like. So basically, if you uh, want to create this uh, receipt uh, for yourself, then you can just take the arguments and uh, insert it into your transaction, which you can put together uh, with Remix or Web3.js Web or Node.js or whatever tool you are more familiar with. Okay. So, uh, possible solutions. Uh, one solution uh, to fix this, and that's what the uh, Banano guys did. They upgraded the smart contract, and they uh, basically put the chain ID. They wrote a function for chain ID, which you can query from uh, Solidity at uh, inbuilt, uh, or, or you can use any other unique ID. Uh, they add this to the receipt, and when you send the receipt, then uh, it is checked <clears throat> on the smart contract that the receipt is actually meant to be used on that network uh, on which you are using it. What can be the problem? The problem can be if you have another wrapped token uh, deployed, there is no real uh, reason why you would, uh, no realistic reason why you would do that, but uh, still this is not the perfect solution, uh, but works um, in limited ways. And the other uh, solution I, I see what is uh, being implemented is that you use different keys uh, on both sides, so you can't, uh, you can't uh, re reply the uh, same uh, receipt because the keys, uh, the, the signer keys won't be uh, accepted by the smart contract. That's again kind of hackish. And then we have uh, an actual web three like solution which is uh, XCMP. They originally wanted to call it ICMP, but you can guess what's the issue with that. So they uh, call this uh, cross-chain messaging protocol. Uh, it, is a, it is a system, it, right now it mostly works in substrate, uh, like think about Polkadot systems, and you can send messages cross-chain through that protocol um, without needing a central bridge or a central system. Now we started to see some projects coming out who are implementing decentralized bridge uh, systems. Uh, yes, if you know the whole thing, there are atomic swaps and other kind of tricky ideas, but XCMP is something that is implementing the, the 
messaging between uh, blockchains. Right now, mostly substrate-based blockchains. And if you are into Rust, I really recommend you to uh, have a look into that because that's a lot of fun. And you can also write smart contracts in Rust, which is way more fun than Solidity, which is kind of uh, Java, JavaScript-like like of combination. Um, yeah, and of course, the uh, Banano guys refilled the uh, hot wallet, and uh, now uh, they are in, in balance. So one Banano versus one wrapped Banano. Um, they refilled, of course, after the uh, bridge hack. So what did we see? Like, we also had the X Infinity hack. Uh, why I want to talk about this? Uh, even though I think I will be soon running out of time. Uh, so uh, why I think it's interesting? Because um, this uh, was done by um, state level kind of actors and they used Web2 um, exploits in, uh, uh, that's what we know. So they, they were probably using Web2 kind of exploits. They bridged enough nodes and that they could do the 51% attack uh, and they took over the Ronin bridge <clears throat> and basically if you uh, are 51% or more uh, in the system, you can, uh, you can do whatever you want and you can push your own transactions. Mm, sadly, it took three, six days until they realized it so they didn't have anything that was monitoring uh, for possible issues, which is pretty long and yeah, Six days, 600 mils. Um, again, why I, uh, yeah, uh, why I uh, speak about this because we are far from Web3 being perfect, but we are heading towards that. Uh, and yeah, they just got recently uh, hacked uh, on Discord. It was a phishing attack. So even if you have like uh, the best uh, blockchain project, you still rely on other systems and what's the takeaway of this is that it is never enough just to audit, for example, the smart contract because most um, projects do that. Okay, now we have the audit report and it's done by uh, Certic Audit, uh, whatever companies, uh, like the, the ones that are more focusing on the logo. Um, and, uh, and then they get fished, then they get uh, breached by old school techniques, which I was learning when I was 13. Uh, another recent hack, a couple of days ago, uh, that's, that's a little bit trolling from me, uh, so sorry for the guys, I know some of them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a quantum uh, proof blockchain, that's what uh, the idea is. And actually the, uh, the blockchain base is, uh, is implementing post-quantum uh, algorithms. Uh, I looked into that and it's pretty cool, but the problem was that they uh, haven't gone uh, through the, the audit, for example, on, the, on their bridge. So what happened is they have the quantum uh, safe uh, system and then they are hacked with the Newtonian hacker. So that's uh, kind of ironic in many ways. And they haven't really um, gave us the info how they uh, were hacked. They said this will be a, there will be a release uh, on the incident response. What uh, I know, what I heard, let's say, is that uh, the keys, the private keys were breach, uh, breached. So that someone uh, got access to the uh, private keys that were controlling the, the bridge uh, transactions. Uh, so uh, these are the final thoughts, mostly. Uh, so when you want to make sure that the project is secure, then audit and pen test everything, not just parts of it. And it is not enough to uh, go around and uh, show your swaggy reports, but the actual thing needs to be done. And yeah, uh, we are hopefully heading to a more decentralized Web3 like systems. If you uh, have questions, uh, I do not know how we are with, how much time we have. Okay, uh, thank you. So if you want to reach out to me, then you can find me directly on Matrix. You also find me on Twitter. If you want to have your project audited, hopefully not just smart contract audited, but 
to have the full uh, scale pen test, then you can uh, send us a mail to hello at crucial.io. If you want to play a hacking game, CCTF, uh, then you can join the cctfmatrix.org. Actually, in 10 minutes, the CCTF challenge is starting, which uh, we prepared for B-sides. What you can get is access to the CCTF yacht, which will, def be, which will be the final um, uh, challenge. And uh, don't want to spoil that, but uh, we either do it again in uh, Dubai or Singapore. Uh, we already agreed on that. And if you do not know what CCTF is, is a global hacking challenge uh, for cryptocurrency uh, hackers. And we don't care about your name, whoever you are. You just play, you uh, get flags, you collect points. And then if you are in the top, then you can uh, join the finals. And also in the finals, you can uh, come totally anonymously if you want. Uh, you can wear hats and cover your face. We don't care. Just uh, enjoy, have fun, and learn uh, crypto hacking in a legitimate way. Uh, so thank you for listening. OK, six, thank you. Any question from anybody, please? Well, the information is there, so don't forget to join the hacking game. Challenge yourselves, challenge everybody else. Uh, we'll start the break in that case early. Uh, please do note that the next presentation will be at 11.10, if you could be back uh, for them. Please, once again, six, thank you.